Hello, Manuel. This is Josh, your communications expert and local juggling entertainment, and I'm here to bring you guys today some announcements for the week. First off, our annual vision meeting coming up tomorrow on Zoom at 7 p.m. You're not going to want to miss it. You're going to catch the vision for Emmanuel for the future. You're going to hear about what we've been doing this past year uh, over the course of, of the pandemic and what how we've adapted, what we've changed. Um, it's going to be really sweet, guys. So uh, make sure to jump on Zoom tomorrow, 7 p.m. Check your emails. Pastor Mark sent out an email with all the information, including the Zoom link. So you're not going to want to miss that. Now, seniors, listen up. This one is for you. And no, I'm not talking high school seniors. I'm talking if you watch the Brady Bunch on TV live as a kid, this one's for you. Golf course lessons here at Emmanuel are coming this summer. So Mondays in June and August, if you're 60 plus, you, there will be free lessons here at the church. Uh, our very own Minju Kim is going to be teaching, whether you're beginner or advanced, um, you can come and learn more about the game of golf. This will be a free lesson. The only fee will be when the group goes to Freddie Hill Farms. You'll pay for your own balls and clubs if you need them. Um, and make sure to bring your own clubs every Monday. There will be some provided to you if you don't have any, um, but make sure you bring your own if you do have them because there won't be enough for everybody. So make sure you go to the group tab on our website and app and sign up for that. That's going to be lit. Now that we're done with the seniors, kids, I'm looking at you. The Schools Out Fam Jam is coming to Emmanuel June 4th from 7 to 8.30 p.m. Yes, there's going to be music crafts, activities, games, prizes, and a lot of family fun. So make sure you're here if you're a kid. Um, you don't even need to come to Emmanuel. If you want to sign up, you can do so at lansdale.church backslash kids. Uh, you can sign up, register there, and let's just have tons of fun. We're excited for it. Um, and the best part about it is you can just come and sit down. This is not a drive through event. This is a come and stay a while um, and just have fun with your family and other families in the community. So make sure you're there for that. And now we have an announcement about our service time starting on June 13th. And this applies to everybody. So make sure you're listening up. June 13th, we are going to be adjusting our service times to 9 and 1045 a.m. So that's right. If you are a regular attender of the nine o'clock service, perfect. Come then be here and we'll be starting pre-service live then. And then if you're a 1030 attender, just Give yourself a little more time in the morning. Sleep in a little bit. Um, we'll be starting our second service on June 13th going forward at 1045 a.m. Um, just to give us a little more time in between services to flip around. People can hang out here, talk, see your friends, um, and just get a little bit more community in here and a little more time for us to prepare for the second service. We are going to be on June 13th again, starting our services at 9 and 10.45 a.m. So make sure you write that down, especially if you're a second service attender. Now guys, I'm gonna pray for us here in a minute for our tithes and offerings. But just a reminder, last Sunday, we did our Global Missions Sunday, um, where we report to you about what we've given over the course of the year, um, mainly our global missions giving, but also our local community and regional giving. We just wanna say thank you again for everything that you've given so far. Um, and if you still are willing to pledge or just didn't get around to it last week, you can go online to lansdale.church backslash missions and you'll see an online form to give your pledge there. It's the same thing as if you had the pledge card. So make sure you get in your pledges. Now I hear that we might have already surpassed our mark from last year. Already within one week, we've surpassed our mark. I, that's just a rumor, I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. If you have any more uh, pledges out there, you just didn't get around to it, uh, feel free to go to that online form and you can submit it there. So let's pray guys to get ready for service. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your hand in our lives, Father. We thank you for doing things in us and through us that we cannot do on our own. We need you, Father, and we need you here and now in this service. We need you as we go out into our lives during the weeks, wherever we're at, Father, we need you, and we would just ask that you would be over this service here today, this next hour. We pray that we could just give you all the glory, whether we're at home, whether we're outside, worshiping on the lawn, 
Father, I pray that you would just find joy in our worship here today. Father, we come and we give you crumbs. They are just little bits of what you actually deserve, Father. So we pray that today, here in this hour, that we would be able to give it all to you, that we would hold nothing back, that we would just seek to give you the glory that you deserve. Father, bless us here today. Give us a great service. And we just, we love you, Father. We pray this all in your precious name. Amen. All right, guys, I think it's time for service. Just gone through the motion, I'm sorry. I just sang another song, take me back to where we start. I open up my heart to you. I'm sorry.
Hey, Emmanuel family, welcome to online worship today. I'm beginning a new series called Ghost Stories, How the Holy Spirit Changes You and Me and Changes Our World. Now, this series has the potential more than any other series that I've ever preached to really change you in a positive direction because we're going to be talking about the ministry of the Holy Spirit in your life and how the Holy Spirit empowers you and uses you to impact your world. Now, this series is based on the book of Acts, so here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that over the next couple months that you read through the book of Acts a couple different times just because you want to get familiar with it, and there's a couple things that you need to know about the book of Acts. First of all, it is a sequel to the Gospel of Luke. In other words, Luke had a patron. His name was Theophilus. We're going to look at that in just a moment when we read Acts chapter 1, verses 1 through 9, and so he wrote the Gospel of Luke, and then volume two was um, the book of Acts. And so when you read the book of Acts, you really should go back to Luke and read them together. The second thing that you need to know about Acts is that it's actually not named properly because the proper name for Acts is really Acts of the Apostles. Or you could say Acts of the Holy Spirit, because the book of Acts actually chronicles the birth and the establishment of the church and how it changed the world. The third thing that you need to know about the book of Acts is that it ends in a weird way. Acts 28 closes, in a way, the book of Acts, but it doesn't. In other words, it ends in the middle of the story. Dr. Luke, as he was writing, just gets to the end and says, okay, I'm closing my book. But the reality is, is that the story was still continuing. Why is that? Actually, Luke does that on purpose because he wants you and I to see that the book of Acts is still continuing today through you and me. In other words, the acts of the apostles or the acts of the Holy Spirit are continuing on today. We are part of the story of the book of Acts. And I just think that's pretty cool to think of it from that direction. So let's just jump right into Acts chapter 1. We're going to be looking at verses 1 through 9 today. In my first book, I told you, Theophilus, there's his patron, about everything that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day that he was taken up to heaven after giving his chosen apostles further instructions through the Holy Spirit. During the 40 days after his crucifixion, he appeared to the apostles from time to time, and he proved to them in many ways that he was actually alive. And he talked to them about the kingdom of God. Now one time when he was eating with them, he commanded them, do not leave Jerusalem until the Father sends you the gift that he promised, as I told you before. 
John baptized with water, but in just a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And so when the apostles were with Jesus, they kept asking him, Lord, has the time come for you to free Israel and restore our kingdom? They're still thinking about an earthly kingdom, but Jesus was teaching them about something much more profound, deeper, and bigger, and that is a spiritual kingdom. He replied, the Father alone has the authority to set those dates and times, and they are not for you to know, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. After saying this, he was taken up in a cloud while they were watching, and they could no longer see him. Let's bow our heads for a moment. Lord Jesus, uh, speak to us through your word. Holy Spirit, give us understanding to apply to our life what it means today to know you in a deep way. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, the title of my thought today is... Have you ever meant, have you meant the most important person in your life? Now, have you ever met a really important or famous person? I was in the same room as a really important person one time. Some years ago, a friend called me and said, um, I have some tickets. Would you like to go see the President of the United States? He's speaking over at a certain arena in our city. And I jumped on it and said, absolutely. I canceled all my appointments, and I just, I'd never seen the President before. So I, I just went to go see him. I stood in line for hours being checked out a couple different times by the Secret Service, as well as the thousands of people that were you know, with me. And finally, we got into the arena, and we saw the president. There was wild cheering and all kinds of things going on, and it was just really, really cool. So I couldn't wait to go home to tell Holly about my day. I was in the same room as the president of the United States. Now, this was, this was a long time ago, and it was when our girls were younger. And so she happened to be at the library, and before I could say anything to her about my day, she said, let me tell you about my day. Okay. She said, I was walking into the library, and the first lady of the United States was walking out of the library, and we met each other, shook hands, exchanged greetings, chatted for a little bit, and I told her that I pray for her and George, the President of the United States, every single day. And Laura Bush said, oh, thank you so much. Isn't that cool, Mark? Hey, how was your day? And I thought, um, I was in the same room with thousands of other people with the president. That's just kind of the way that things work with Holly. She's always running into people. For example, this isn't even part of the sermon. I just want to tell you this. Holly was on a plane one time um, headed to, um, I think, Philadelphia. We lived in um, Iowa at the time. And she was looking forward to just sitting down, having some me time, and reading a book. She had some snacks with her. And this guy sits down next to her, and he's trying to engage her in conversation. And she was being polite about it, but she kept kind of looking over like, okay, yeah, hey, thanks, and go back to her book. But he wouldn't let up. He just kept talking with her. Well, then the Holy Spirit checked Holly that, uh, you know, she wasn't being very uh, friendly. So she just closed up her book and engaged in this conversation. Come to find out, this man said to her, um, have you ever heard of the singing group, The Temptations? Well, yes, I have. Well, I'm the lead person and the founding member of The Temptations. And Holly wouldn't believe her, but wouldn't believe him. She was like, no, no, that can't possibly be true. You're pulling my leg. And he kept going on and on and on trying to convince her. Finally, the only way he could convince her was he just stood up in the middle of the airplane and said, hey, guys, 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 come on over. And the rest of The Temptations group came on over and sung to Holly, my girl. Well, chaos broke out on the plane. People are clapping. People are standing up and cheering. People are crying. Can you believe the temptations are on this flight? And it was incredible. Then he pulls out of his briefcase, after all that, he pulls out a picture of all the temptations and has everybody sign it and then gives it to Holly. That's just kind of the way Holly's life works out. She's always running into people like that. Notice something about these scripture verses that I just read. The disciples already knew Jesus, like the most important person they've ever met. They had a personal relationship with him. They had been on the earth for three years, intimately involved in his public ministry. They had seen him crucified. 
Their hopes had been dashed that he was the Messiah, but then the resurrection happened. And now Jesus was appearing for 40 days all over the place and proving that he was in existence and he was still alive. And all along the way, Jesus is teaching them about the kingdom of God. And so they were like, oh my goodness, this is incredible. Jesus is alive. But then Jesus says something remarkable. He says, it is necessary for me to go away. That's why I'm ascending into heaven. Because if I don't come, if I don't go away, then the Holy Spirit will not come. And then it all came back to them. In other words, just before in the upper room, just before Jesus was crucified, Jesus talked a lot. John records this in John 13, 14, 15, 16, about the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And they're like, oh, right. Okay, Jesus told us about the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And they may or may not get who the Holy Spirit is at that moment. But listen, here's what Jesus is saying. Jesus is saying, as important as I am to you, I'm going to be leaving and ascending up into heaven and somebody more important, is going to come and be in your life. Stop and think about that. Isn't Jesus enough? Apparently, Jesus himself said he's not enough. He needs to go away or else the Holy Spirit won't come. Now, that's what today is about, meeting the most important person that you're ever going to meet. Have you ever thought, is there more to the Christian life than what I'm presently experiencing? Yes, you pray. Yes, you go to church. Yes, you read your Bible. Yes, you try to serve as much as you, know, you can to the best of your ability. But there's a lot of Christians that feel this deep sense of emptiness or this sense of, I, I just thought that there would be more, more adventure to the Christian life, more connection with God than what I'm experiencing at this moment. It's this feeling of, I thought that there would be more that I want to tap into these next few moments. In fact, Ruth Haley Barton in her book, Sacred Rhythm, writes this. Your desire for more of God than what you have right now is the truest thing about you. You might think your woundedness or your sinfulness is the truest thing about you, or your job title or identity as husband or wife, mother or father, that defines you. But in reality, it is your desire for God. There is a place in each of us where God's spirit witnesses with our spirit about our truest identity. Here, God dwells with our spirit. If you're interested in more today in your Christian life, then this message is for you, this longing for more. Now, this text really begs three questions that need to be asked. The first question is, why is the Holy Spirit the most important person in your life? Well, first of all, because the Holy Spirit is God. Now, let me share with you John 14, 26. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, Jesus, Jesus is speaking, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I said to you. So here's what I think. I think that most of us can get the concept of God the Father. I get that. I think most of us can get the concept of God the Son. But God the Holy Spirit is kind of like this mysterious concept. A lot of people think like they think of the Holy Spirit as that kind of weird relative that you have that keeps showing up at family gatherings. You know, like Uncle Wally. I mean, he's a nice guy, but he sits over in the corner and he's eating his hamburger and people are walking by. Hey, Uncle Wally. But nobody's really engaging him because he's just a little odd. Well, that's what a lot of people think about the Holy Spirit. I mean, they believe in God the Father. Everybody believes in Jesus. But when it comes to the Holy Spirit, I'm just not so sure. Well, let me give you an illustration of kind of grasping who the Holy Spirit is. I have three large containers. You see one right here. I'll get to that in just a moment. But I have this one container, and this is filled with water. We call this H2O. Now, I have another container over here. This is filled with ice. And then we have this container here. This is filled with dry ice. Now, here's what I want you to see. We look at these and we say, okay, they're basically the same, right? I mean, we have water and we have ice and we have dry ice. Now, for sermon illustration, I'm just saying that these are all the same, H2O, H2O. I know that this is, you know, CO2, but they're all the same in essence, right? 
But what happens, look at that. Isn't that pretty cool? That's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit just kind of is this, this wind, you know, this, this force in our lives that's hard to kind of pin down, but nonetheless, very, very powerful. Now, all of these three have functions, right? I mean, in other words, God the Father, the water, he's our creator. And God the Son, the ice, he's our savior. But you know what Jesus says, John 14? That the Holy Spirit is our helper. So the Holy Spirit is God himself. That's why he's the most important person in your life. Also, the Holy Spirit is our helper. The word helper in Greek has a couple different meanings to it. It's like a diamond with many facets. So the Holy Spirit is our comforter. He's our advocate. Now, the Greek word for advocate is lawyer. Did you know that the Holy Spirit's a lawyer? The Holy Spirit is our teacher. The Holy Spirit is our intercessor, our strengthener, and our counselor. The best prayer that you can ever pray is the shortest prayer, and that is help. Have you ever prayed that prayer? Lord, just help me. I don't know what to do. Well, that's an invitation for the Holy Spirit to minister to you. That's a great prayer because we know that God will always answer it every single time. He will send the Holy Spirit, who is our helper, to help us. So the Holy Spirit helps us when we're depressed and we're anxious. We're still living in anxious times. I'm so grateful that things are lessening with the pandemic and things are returning to some semblance of, of order or normalcy. But we still have this heavy blanket of a pandemic over us. And many of us, you know, are just really tired. We're tired of doing abnormal. We want to return to normal. And the Holy Spirit, when we pray help, the Holy Spirit is the one that calms us down. The Holy Spirit is the one that strengthens us when we're emotionally depleted and we just don't know how much further we can go. The Holy Spirit is also our teacher. Did you know that the Holy Spirit teaches us how to pray? In fact, Romans chapter 8 says that when we don't know what to pray, the Holy Spirit prays for us. So when you're having a hard time putting your words together to really try to pray to the Lord and, and try to figure out what you're really asking, the Holy Spirit already knows because he can interpret your heart. And he communicates that to God the Father and says, here's what they really want. Here's what they're really looking for. What I've discovered is that the Holy Spirit helps us to hold our tongue when we're angry or help us to get along with people or help us to be a good parent, help us to be a good student or help us to be a good friend or help us to be a good worker. Now, how does the Holy Spirit actually help us? Well, let me just give you a personal illustration that just comes out of my life. Um, when it comes to sermon preparation. So how do I put sermons together? Well, oftentimes I'll just sit in the office by myself and I'll begin to think, hmm, what do I think Emmanuel needs to hear at this moment in the life of the church? And I'll pray about it. I said, Holy Spirit, just give me some thoughts. Give me your thoughts. I'll talk to the staff. I'll talk to some other people. Maybe I'll read a book and, and that, that book will capture my imagination. And then I land on a topic for a series. And then in that series, I will write out a paragraph of what I think each sermon in that series should be, and I'll attach a scripture to it. Like for this series, we're working through the book of Acts, and I'll create a paragraph, and I'll send it to the staff, and I'll invite their input. I'll say, hey, look this over and give me some thoughts on it, and then here's what will happen. When I'll sit down for a sermon, I'm, I'm sitting in front of my computer, you know how the little cursor just kind of does this, and I'm just thinking, Lord help me. Give me your thoughts. Give me your ideas. And here's what happens. It happens every single time. The Holy Spirit will bring to mind something that I've been learning out of scripture, you know, through my study of commentaries or books or podcasts or articles that I've been reading or conversations that I've been having. And the Holy Spirit cobbles all of these things together and begins to focus my thought. Like, for example, this illustration that I just gave you about these three containers, Somebody a couple weeks ago sent me a message that another preacher preached and said, hey, I thought his message was really great on the Holy Spirit because I know you're preaching on the Holy Spirit in a couple weeks, so why don't you listen to that message? I did, and I thought, as soon as I saw these three containers, I thought, oh, I want to share that with Emmanuel. So the Holy Spirit constantly brings thoughts and ideas into my mind from conversations or from things that I've read or things that I've listened to 
and he just cobbles them together and creates a message. Now, here's what you need to know. The Holy Spirit is always compelling. So if I'm preaching a message and this message isn't compelling to you, don't blame God. Don't blame Scripture. Don't blame the Holy Spirit. Blame me. Because what that really means is, is that Mark hasn't been listening or open to the work of the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is always faithful to bring things together to make them compelling. So here's what I know. If the Holy Spirit will do that for me, the Holy Spirit will do that for you. Maybe some of you are thinking, man, I don't know why I can't keep down a job. I'm always being fired. I'm always being let go. I'm always being downsized. The Holy Spirit will help you to become a great employer or a great employee. He may use some books. He may use a conversation with a coworker. He may use a conversation with a boss. In other words, if you're open, the Holy Spirit is speaking all the time, bringing those things together. Some of you, your kids are going through a really challenging time, and you're thinking, Man, how am I going to get my kids through this particular difficult time in my life? I don't want them to be lost to me and my family, and I don't want them to be lost to the Lord. If you're listening, the Holy Spirit will bring something, an article that you read, or the Holy Spirit will, you know, you're listening to Christian radio, and there'll be a, uh, there'll be a, a, um, a song that the Holy Spirit will strengthen you with. The, the Holy Spirit will just bring all of these things into your life to teach you how to get through whatever you're going through at that moment. Now, why is the Holy Spirit the most important person in your life? Well, because he's God and because he's the helper. But guess what? The Holy Spirit is also the one who teaches you and reminds you of the things of Jesus. Now, here's what's really important. You got to read the Bible in order to know what Jesus said. So they kind of go hand in hand, right? But the more you read the Bible, the more you're inviting the Holy Spirit to bring at critical moments in your life scripture passages of what Jesus said. So here's what I've been thinking. Are there some things that maybe you need to hear that I need to hear in this moment from Jesus? I just came up with three. How about this? Do you need rest? Listen to Matthew eleven twenty nine. 29. Jesus said, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Friend, if you need rest today, you just lean into the words of Jesus. Allow the Holy Spirit to remind you of what Jesus said and allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you and just enter into the rest of the Lord. Also, some people are feeling lonely. So listen to the words of Jesus. Be sure of this. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. There is never a moment in your life in which the Holy Spirit is not with you. Jesus promised that he would never, ever leave you. And so you may feel lonely, but just because you feel lonely doesn't mean that you are lonely because Jesus has always promised to be with you. Here's one last thing that the Holy Spirit will remind you of. Do you need some peace? John 14, 27, peace, Jesus said, I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give you as the world gives. Conditional. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. The peace that Jesus wants to give you through his spirit is the kind of peace that isn't manufactured. It's the kind of peace that comes when you rest in the arms of your loving Father and release control and surrender to Him. Now, there's a second question that I want to ask you, and that is this. Have you ever been filled with the Holy Spirit after you accepted Christ? What? What are you talking about? I thought we were filled with the Spirit when we did accept Christ. No, that's not always true. The infilling of the Holy Spirit is not automatic. Now, Acts chapter 19, verses 1 and 2, says something very, very fascinating. The Apostle Paul is traveling in Asia Minor, <clears throat> and he's come to a place called Ephesus. And he asks these Ephesians a couple questions, like, Paul traveled through the interior regions until he reached Ephesus on the coast, where he found several believers. Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? He asked them. No, they replied. We haven't even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Oh, wow. These people were Christians. These people believed in Jesus as Messiah. 
but they had incomplete knowledge of who Jesus was, his death and his resurrection, and they didn't know anything about the Holy Spirit. So here's what the Apostle Paul did. The Apostle Paul gave them some basic teaching <clears throat> on who the Holy Spirit is and completed what they didn't know about Jesus, what it meant, his death and his resurrection, and then he laid hands on them, and then he prayed for the Holy Spirit to come upon them, and guess what? The Holy Spirit did, and they were blessed beyond belief. The Holy Spirit is like an upgrade. Have you ever gotten an upgrade? Some years ago, Holly and I were in San Diego, and we were on vacation, and we wanted to travel from San Diego up to San Francisco and take the Pacific Coast Highway. And so when we got to the airport, I had already prearranged to rent a car from, I think, Enterprise or Hertz or something like that. But when we got to the car rental place, they said, hey, good news, we're giving you an upgrade. I had gotten this little compact car, and they said, we're giving you a brand new Ford Mustang. And I thought to myself, a Ford Mustang driving on the Pacific Coast Highway, I love that upgrade. For the Ephesians, the Holy Spirit was an upgrade. And my question to you is, do you need an upgrade? You may be a Christian, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you've been filled with the Holy Spirit. Well, I'm going to talk more about this next week, about how to be filled with the Holy Spirit. But in the meantime, just consider this. I think everybody should ask to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I think everybody should wait on the Lord. His timing is His timing. You may pray and immediately be filled with the Spirit, or you may pray and it may be next Thursday if, when you're filled with the Holy Spirit. We just can't make God a vendor. We just wait. You know, the disciples waited 10 days to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And what do we do in the meantime? We just go about our business, but listen to this. Remember I told you that Acts is the sequel to Luke? Well, Luke chapter 24, verses 52 and 53, Luke has a different slant on the ascension and what happened afterwards. He says these words. So they worshiped him, Jesus ascended into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem filled with great joy. And they spent all of their time in the temple praising God. So here's what I think. If, if you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit, you just continue to do what you're doing and wait and ask God to fill you, but don't let that stop you from giving praise to God and just worshiping Him to the best of your ability. One more question. Would you like to be filled with the Holy Spirit again? Okay, what do I mean by that? Well, how many times do you take a shower? I mean, I take a shower every day, right? But you know, I mean, stop and think about this. We, we don't take a shower once a year. We don't take a shower once a month. We don't take a shower once a week. Most of us, I think, take a shower once a day. Now, when I got out of the shower this morning, I was clean. But that's not going to stop me from getting a shower tomorrow because I want to get clean all over again. And that's not going to stop me from getting a shower the next day. In other words, I'm constantly getting showers to keep me clean. Well, that's exactly the way it is with the Holy Spirit. Do you know that I pray every single day to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Because I just want to experience all that God has for me to experience. And I'm not saying that every day is like jumping for joy and I feel the presence of God in a profound way day, but I do know that God is with me and that he is leading me. Sometimes I'm not even aware of his leading. Sometimes I'm very aware of his leading. But do you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit again? Over and over and over in the book of Acts, we see that the, whole, that the disciples were filled with the Holy Spirit again and again and again. And I, I just think that's a beautiful thing. Why would you not want to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Why would you not want to experience the most important person in your life that you will ever meet? I would like to close in prayer. And during this prayer, I want to give you an invitation to simply, in your own words, Say, Holy Spirit, I'm open. Fill me completely. Let's bow our heads together. Thank you, Jesus, for this teaching that comes out of Acts chapter 1. <clears throat> We're really excited about this series, Ghost Stories. Lord, we want to be changed on the inside. We want to be changed so that we can make outward change in our world, in our family system, at our workplace, in our neighborhood. But right now, I think that you're speaking to some people who are listening and there's a little tug on their heart saying, 
I want to be filled with the Spirit. I want to meet the most important person I will ever meet. And that's the Holy Spirit. So Holy Spirit, I invite you to come into my life again. Holy Spirit, give people who are watching right now the courage to say, I want to pray that prayer too, and I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. God, do your work right now. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Hey, God bless you, Emmanuel. you do